Hello, in this video I will also talk about multiprocessing in Python and um, also the multiprocessing module, but now a different class that you can use for your multiprocessing. And um, yeah, this is the pool class and previously we've talked about the process class, which just creates one new process, but this pool now creates um, yeah, multiple new processes at the same time and also allows you to efficiently use these processes and reuse these processes even um, yeah, to do multiple computations after each other and um, yeah I will show you how to use this pool and um, yeah you can specify in this pool class how many processes you want to create and um, just as a note here it doesn't really make much sense to create more processes then you have CPU cores um, because each of these processes runs on a separate CPU core and um, if you have more than you have CPU cores then you will run into the same problem that we have in multi-threading again that um, one CPU core has to uh, be shared among two basically pieces of code running on that and it has to switch between them and this gets even more inefficient than in the multi-threading because we're now dealing with processes and we have to um, yeah, copy uh, or move a lot of information over uh, whenever we're switching a process inside the CPU. So um, yeah, keep that in mind that it doesn't make too much sense to create lots of processes, um, whereas it might sometimes make sense to create more than you have CPU cores. Um, and yeah, there are some special cases where, where it might make sense, um, same as with multi-threading, that it also can make sense sometimes. Okay, and um, yeah, how do you find out how many cores your CPU has? Um, the pool class actually does that by default, so if you don't specify how many processes you want to have, then it will take the amount of cores available. And um, yeah, these are, so um, yeah, there is a function for that that returns how many cores you have. It's multiprocessing.cpu count. And uh, I can just execute this here. And on my computer, these are, this is eight. So I have eight cores here, um, which are able to run in parallel. And um, yeah, this might be different for you. Um, might not be, it depends on the CPU that, uh, that you have in your computer. Um, and just as a quick note, this technically these aren't uh, cores, so I don't have eight cores in my CPU, I only have four cores, I know that. Um, but there's this thing called hyperthreading, and hyperthreading allows you to um, run multiple threads in parallel on the same CPU um, in hardware. So, um, yeah, this might get a little confusing if I talk about that too much. Uh, I've linked the Wikipedia page of hyperthreading here. So if you're interesting in, if interested in that, um, you can read about that. Um, but yeah, I will just call these uh, hyperthreads cores. Um, so yeah, I will just refer to my four CPU cores with each two threads as eight cores because this is just simpler for this sake and um, I don't think it matters too much. Okay, um, yeah, then how do we create such a pool? Um, first of all, for the example, I will um, have this function here. Uh, this function is called expensive and uh, this is just a really inefficient way to sum up an n-dimensional NumPy array so um, yeah, it takes an array here as a parameter, it's called x, and then it saves this result variable, which is the accumulator for, um, yeah, for this sum, and then just goes over um, this, yeah, this x matrix and um, adds, it's, uh, adds the current value to this result and then returns the result in the end. And you shouldn't ever sum, um, yeah, sum a matrix up like that. Uh, you should always use the np.sum function because that's much more efficient than this piece of code. But um, yeah, for the sake of this example, I will do it like this because this is slower and I want something to run slow. 
so that you can um, see the difference that multiprocessing uh, can make here. Okay, and I will also generate some numbers here, uh, which we can sum up. And um, this is just an uh, A range of 10 million numbers. And I will reshape this um, into matrices of size 100 by 100. And um, yeah, this means that in the end here, I will have 1000 uh, matrices, um, which I want to sum up each. Okay, um, then first of all, yeah, how long will it take to do this uh, sequentially? Um, here we just use the map function and um, you've seen map before, you just specify the function and then the um, argument to this function. And um, yeah, it will run this expensive function, um, well, basically on each element of nums. And um, in this number array, it will just iterate over this first um, dimension and sum up each of the matrices. So yeah, this took 10, pretty much 10 seconds um, doing this sequentially. But now let's see if we're using a pool, how much faster can we get? Um, and here I will create the pool and we'll do this um, using the context manager. And as I said before, this is the yeah, preferred way to do this because you don't, uh, you can't forget to close um, the pool or the process in the end which would leak memory, uh, which would leak system resources. But um, yeah, this will be handled correctly. Um, even if the program crashes, then um, none of the processes will be left behind. They will all uh, be removed um, thanks to this context manager. Okay, but we create a pool here, um, just using the normal pool constructor. And we could pass here um, the number of processes that we want but I just left this empty so that we get the um, number of, um, yeah, that we get the maximum sensible amount of processes, which is the number of CPU cores here. And then I just um, name this uh, pool P so that we can use it inside this context manager. Okay, and um, then this P, uh, the pool also has a map function and this works just as the normal Python map function. And uh, we specify the function and the, yeah, the value that we want to iterate over or that we want to map. And um, yeah, this will do this uh, uh, in parallel instead of this um, traditional map function, which does that sequentially. So let's see how long this will take. And this just took three seconds. So this is uh, more than three times faster and um, this is already a big increase that we got from this pool. And um, yeah, it's very nice that we have this pool uh, class because then we don't need to um, yeah, manage our uh, multiple processes ourselves. This pool class takes, take, takes care of that and it just spawns processes, then um, queues them, runs them, and um, in the end it joins all of them and also closes them so we don't have to do all of that ourselves but it's just wrapped in this pool class which is really nice and yeah as you can see it still gets us um, a speed increase when we sum up matrices in a very inefficient way